information doesn't travel faster than the speed of light between two places or two events, whatever you want to call them. Quantum entanglement is a great thing. It, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's... Yeah, give, um, us, give us a minute on that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, um, so you can imagine, I always describe it in terms of quantum coins, right? So you can have these, you have a quantum coin, which is uh, heads 50% of the time when you look at it and tails 50% of the time when you look at it. But the key weird thing about quantum mechanics is that uh, it will not be heads or tails until you look at it. And we can have a huge philosophical discussion about what that means. And there's a whole literature on it, but just that's the way that nature behaves, right? So the, the coin can be- oh, By the way, just, just to be clear, Brian, just because we don't want to like mislead people here, it has nothing to do with your eye brain connection. No. Right. <laughs> right. It's not it's not that you look at it, it's that if you make a measurement of it, no well, matter what's making the measurement. Right. Hundred percent correct. Okay. <laughs> very, very important. It has nothing to do with your consciousness nothing. or anything else. Okay. Nothing. So mm -hmm. but it's an entangled state of two quantum coins. And I do this in my live show actually, I write it down. You can have a pair of quantum coins and they can be in the state heads, tails plus tails heads. Heads, tails, plus tails, heads. So that's what they are. The, the, if, if you look at them, uh, right, with the caveat you said, if they're, they're, then they're, they could be heads, tails, or tails, heads. Never heads, heads, or tails, tails. They're always all, they're always all those things. They're always heads or tails. Yeah. Well, and then, but then in the so-called Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, if you, if you look at them, then they, they will then become, if you look at them with the caveat Neil said, you've got to be careful with language, then they will be in one or other of those configurations. Wow. The key thing about entanglement is you can separate that, those coins then, but they're still in that entangled state. You're very careful about it. And we've done this, quantum computers work like this, right? So you separate them, they're still in that entangled state. And then as the question has said, it is true. If you then make an observation of one of them, then, then, you, then it, and, it, and it turns out it's heads. Even if it's a billion light years away, the other one's then tails, because that was the state it was set up in. If that one's heads, that one's tails, and that one's tails, that one heads. So that, that's quantum entanglement in, in a nutshell. And it is indeed, Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. He didn't like it at all. So there is, however, however, the really important thing to say is you can't signal using that process. Even though you might intuitively think I could send Morse code or something, I could send dots and dashes, I could say yes or no. Immediately across the universe, I could answer a question, yes or no. You can't with that. It's really built into the structure of the theory. So even if, if you might think that the, the spirit of relativity is being broken. The letter of the law is not, because information doesn't travel faster than the speed of light in that sense. So what about all this talk about the future of entanglement possibly uh, being the foundation for, uh, for encryption? Oh yeah, so the, the, this is, it's often described, if you think about that entangled system, it's a very rich system. It's much richer than just two bits. They're called qubits, these things. You, you gave the simple you gave the simplest possible case yeah yeah and so it's a, generally you can entangle things photons for example and, or electrons you can entangle them um, and, and the, the point is that the the structure the information potentially if you like is much richer it's often entanglements often in quantum computing is called an information resource right so you're right so you can do things with this you can build very powerful computers they're very good at certain things at the moment, one of which is breaking encryption, right? They're extremely good at factorizing large numbers, which is what our banking is built on. So yes, uh, so you, so that they, they are part of our technology now. This property of the universe is part of our technology. Oh, by the way, Chuck, do you know who has the world record for most distant entangled particles in the world? No. China. Someone asked me that the other day, and I couldn't. I didn't know how what the distance is. I know people have done it over the. Oh, so they they've done it from Earth to orbit. And China uh, did it, so it's the, it's Earth orbit distance, and they've also done it in fiber optics, which I think is harder, right? Because it's not just open air, so to speak. Yeah. And there could be more ways to break the entanglement and preventing mm -hmm. the great distances. So unless I saw there's 50 kilometers 
entangled via fiber optics, which means this can work across a city uh, scale, for example. Yeah, that's amazing. Right. Yeah. So but I'll tell you how um, it's a very good question because how, how difficult it is to understand really fundamentally. There's a Leonard Susskind is one of the great um, black hole theorists, a great theoretical physicist, who wrote, by the way, a brilliant book called The Theoretical Minimum. If you're really interested in quantum mechanics and you really want to get down into it, his book, The Theoretical Minimum on Quantum Mechanics, is superb. And isn't he the guy who's like a, a big exponent of the holographic universe too? Yes. Uh, he, he invented that really with Gerald, Gerald Tooth. But he um, has got, he came up with a theory which he works on called ER equals EPR. So EPR is really this entanglement. It's Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. So they, in the, in the 30s, I think it was, Einstein with these two colleagues did a lot of work on entanglement, really trying to understand it and see what it meant for reality. And uh, ER is Einstein, Rosen, which is wormholes. So there is a picture of quantum entanglement, which has come to the surface in trying to understand black holes, that you can picture these things being separated by, as I said, light years, these quantum coins or whatever you want to call them, being linked with a wormhole, uh, which links them together. And, and so that's very a very kind of cutting edge, advanced way of looking at it, which is not altogether widely accepted, but a mainstream in the study of black holes and how information gets out of black holes. Well, but at least that feels better hmm. than this happening in the middle of empty space, right? I mean, if you connect in with a wormhole, however exotic that is, I can feel that, all right? I'm, I'm with you on that, all right? And then the, the structure of the universe is all uh, connected by wormholes pairing up entangled entities. Yeah. What we're looking at is something called emergent space-time, which is very cutting edge. Sean Carroll, actually, you will know, wrote a good book on this. I think it's called Something Deeply Hidden. Sean called a physicist at Caltech. I think he's uh, he, he's moved recently. Is that correct? Yeah, he's right? on Hopkins, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but, um, but so this idea that, is that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement. So I think mm. it's true to say the general view now in the cut on the cutting edge is that entanglement and space and time are intimately linked and so you're losing me on i know i don't i don't want to take up the show because now i'm lost on the <laughs> i'm lost <laughs> on this right entanglement it. entanglement <laughs> and the black holes because you're talking about you know what she says in the question here is you know you're talking about spaghettification it's reduced to a stream of atoms and then you were talking about the information coming out so uh, 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 maybe I'm too sci-fi in this reconstruction of this information. How do you do that without losing all the information? If you come down to the atoms themselves get broken apart, I'm, I don't understand how that would actually, that entanglement would then be anything um, on, on the side of reconstitution. What would it be? It's, it would just be a big mess. It's a brilliant question, and um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my God, uh, it is! <laughs> See, wait, wait, it, 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 the, Chuck is about to pop right there. Okay, Chuck, no, I'm just saying, like, gasket. don't be, don't be afraid not to know what the f people are talking about, because you might end up asking a brilliant question. <laughs> <laughs> but when we actually, Brian, we got to take a break. Okay. Uh, when we come back, we'll pick up and see if all of Chuck's gaskets were blown over, over that moment, <laughs> Chuck. <laughs>